here with my cat, Kelly.
I think you all saw that. Huh. Exhale, that, that relief, that phew, I got through it. You didn't have the AC, so I mean a little bit sweaty. Yes, no, it is a little bit warm in here. Yeah. Um, but no, beautiful playing, both of you, Rob. Um, actually, Kelly, I'm probably going to just work with Jimmy, e, so you're off the hook. But thank you, beautiful playing. So, thank you very much. Not in this piano part, you did very well. Um, there's three things I want to talk about with you. I thought overall, what I really like, and it's kind of a, a pro and a con, I love Jing Yi's use of the full bow. Okay? You guys all saw how fluid she was. That's the positive, but we always need to be careful as violists. I'm sure you've heard teachers talk about bow distribution, right? You tend to, and, and I love, because it's using the full bows that gets our sound to spin, to fill up the hall. But we've got to be really careful in how we plan our bow usage. Because I felt a lot of times with runs and a lot of notes, you tend to use a lot of bow on the first note and the last note or the last notes of runs. It gets a little, a little bit swallowed or we lose it a little bit. Okay, so I want to address, you know, violists um, tend to use their bows like cellists. As you know, cellists have a little smaller bow, right? And so we tend to have a little more compact. I always tell my students, the frog is your friend. Why? Because it's the heavier part of the bow. And so if we use the frog more, I can be lazy. I don't have to work as hard because it speaks. So there's a lot of times I would really like to see you saving bow at the frog so that the weaker part of the bow, we actually um, can still make those notes speak. Okay. So that's one thing I want to address. There's three things. The second thing is a little bit about vibrato. Okay. Yeah. Something tells me you've heard these things before. Good. I, I, you know, I think it's great. Well, not always great. Yeah. But when my students hear another teacher say the same thing as I do, I feel a little bit, oh, they should know it by now. But I'm like, good. Maybe, you know, they'll hear it again a little different way. You know what I mean? Explained a little different way, and then it'll click. So I don't care how my students learn it, but as long as it clicks. So maybe I can talk about a little bit something different. But especially these octaves, you know, what is it? Or, or you know what I'm talking about, yeah. these octaves at the end? At the end. Yeah, or anywhere. We've got it both in the, in the expo as well as the recap. Yeah, so hey, I know it's in the wrong key, but yeah. you vibrate the first note beautifully. Mm -hmm. And I want you to sing your bow. But you don't vibrate the second note at all. And so, you know, you have an arm for broad. I, I always tell my students we want, we want arm, we want hand and wrist. So it depends, the sound that you want should be the teacher to the type of vibrato we use. But what's most important is that you've got a vibrate. So uh, you have a beautiful first finger. And, So play your first finger, 
Excellent. You've got this natural rolling or waving motion that we're looking for. Okay? And so now what I want you to think about is you have training wheels right here. You can't come out and around from four. Because you're staying on the, you're, well, you're going on a, on a, exactly, a different string. But what I want you to think about, I tell my students, this is all, these are concepts from Karen Tuttle, who's now deceased, but she taught at Curtis and Juilliard. Karen Tuttle teaches to feel the wrist and the forearm under the finger that you're playing, okay? So we never really want to reach for four. We want to make sure we have a good foundation and a good structure under that finger. So play one for me. You guys see that she has a straight line coming up to one. I want to just move it just a little bit, Jamie. Right there. See if you can vibrate that A flat for me. Let me hear what it sounds like. A flat. Okay, good. There you are. Okay, so the third thing, you saw, okay, the third thing I'm going to jump around a little bit that I didn't address. Remember what I said? I love the upper body freedom. You lock your knees mm -hmm. and you come up on your left heel a lot. Yeah. So there, yeah, she knows this. Good. <laughs> Everything I've mentioned so far, she knows. Yeah. I'm so your homework is to fix these things, right? <laughs> Yeah. I left my recording before it because I feel like uh, my balance is, you know, home balance. Yes, it is. And, you know, it's it's hard because we're on stage and we get alert, a little nervous, so everything kind of comes up. Right. And so we always want to kind of think down and under, really feeling, you know, your, your, your feet, that's your foundation, right? right? And so you sometimes come up on your toes, you're aware of it, and that raises her heels. And if we're playing Bronx and we're trying to get this gorgeous tone and gutsy, and this half this deals with the vibrato, you know. I've got, I don't know what's going on. I rehaired my bow and I get these random squeaks and I don't know if it's bad here or whatever, but. But to get that sound, you really want to feel down. If I. but I really want you to feel heels and ball of feet, right? So like when I went to kind of rock you, no, so, so you're here, mm -hmm. I want you to kind of melt. It's hot in here, kind of, oh, wow. you know, yeah. Use that to your advantage of not working so hard. Yeah, good. Upper body, just kind of breathe. Are you breathing? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. But again, you're going to breathe in, you're going to exhale. 
exhale, feel the air going all the way into the floor. Mm -hmm. And play. Exhale, play. The wrist 
and the forearm supports. This is for slow play, everybody. For fast, you center the hand. But to find the most beautiful sound of every finger, Karen Tull used to say, every finger has its own weight and balance. And so you want to balance the wrist and the forearm under every finger. So step one, Jimmy, is I want you to exhale and feel your pussy. Good. There you go. Letting go on the legs. Step two, check the head, check the shoulder, and then in a mirror, you're going to watch this sweet wrist. Thumb is going to be nice and easy. Wrist in and under, form in and under, and then the whole hand rolls and waves. It's oh, it's easier. Okay, I've gotten oh, and oh, it's easy. Okay, all the, my students say it's easier. I'm like, okay, fine, go back, play a part. I don't care. But yes, it's easier yeah. because you're not having to work. Mm -hmm. If we really think about a vibrato, it's a reflex action. That's what my teacher taught. Mm -hmm. And if we're having to work and we squeeze, we're stopping the natural reflex, the shaking, right? Careful that you don't come too far under. And it's imagine there's an imaginary wall okay. and you're knocking, right? Knocking on that wall. That's the back of the hand. Mm -hmm. So we're going to chill. Step one, yeah. There you are. And rolling. Use all four fingers to help the rolling. Yeah, sometimes. Oh, I don't have any hand in fourth finger. Like. That's, that's kind of why we're going to get back to that octave. Oh, we're using your second finger to find the sound. Okay. All right, she's already jumping ahead on the octave that I started with. <laughs> so we're going to trust that. The overachiever here, of course, at Round Top. All right, yes, no, nothing but the best here. Play your first finger for me, A flat. Okay, so stop. So you're, again, you're going to keep reminding yourself to breathe. Under one goes the wrist and the forearm. So now find that rolling of one. Yes, I don't want your wrist to poke back towards okay. me, in and under. So chill, chill, chill and the rocking there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold your wrist. Okay. There you go. Let go of the bicep. Give me more pressure in the bow. And for those that aren't string players, this is probably the hardest thing for us to do. You saw when I was trying to get Jing Yi to let go of the left hand, she all of a sudden lost her sound. <laughs> okay, And that's, we've got to kind of divide the body. Pianissimo over here, forte over here. And so that's cool. We'll forget about the sound for a second to really allow her to let go of the left hand. So try that. But again, I want you to think in and under. Okay. In and under. The energy is coming up your arm to support the hand. I'm going to, yeah, you're kind of cranking on the C yeah. string. We're only on the G string, so I want you to chill. Okay, but see, you feel the difference there? Oh. So you see what you were doing? Yeah, I'm locked. Turn, yeah, turn. This is this is the danger for violinist E, E and A string. We do this, violist D and A string. So we should never have this bend in the wrist. We should always have. Here's our C string G D A. Right, the whole we don't bring the elbow because we've had teachers that tell us get your elbow under for the low strings, yeah. and so we do. But then we forget that it's a movable joint. This shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. So every string, both with the bow arm and with the left hand, yes. So go to the C string, and now the whole arm and hand mm -hmm. G D A. And you see now, it's not bent in like mm -hmm. that, right? Right. So remember, upper two springs, the elbow does have the freedom. Yes. So in orchestra this week, when you have rest, I just want you to gently, from here, mm -hmm. gently swing, oh, just mm -hmm. right here. And it hangs, it's not working so hard. Yeah. All right, back to that E flat. Mm -hmm. can, can you tell me when the half an hour is up? Because I have a feeling I'm probably bowing. You have okay. a minute. I have a minute. <laughs> <clears throat> Lovely, you're going to do this okay. very much in a minute. Mm -hmm. Show me your first finger. Chill. And now, good. Okay, yeah. so then you got, oh, she said, oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. So again, I'm holding your wrist mm -hmm. to stabilize her wrist. Yeah. Now we go to the second finger. Forearm and wrist under two. Mm -hmm. Elbow should not move. No. 
So now rolling, remember that imaginary wall that you're knocking on? Okay, and now we go to three, wrist and forearm. Oh, she's never done this before. Three, chill, chill. There you are. And now let's use three with four. And now vibrate. Oh. <laughs> You don't have to worry about core right now, okay? okay? But I do want to hear, let's go ahead and play piano. About You're forgetting everything you know. You guys, when you make habits, or when you change habits, and I know a lot of you with me are changing some habits, thinking about different things, cellists, violinists, you as well. Don't expect it to be perfect the first time. We really do need to allow a beginner's mindset when we try new things. Because if you think, it should be perfect, I already know how to play the viola, I already know how to play the violin, we fight ourselves and it takes a lot longer. So right now, it's just like, okay, pretend nobody ever taught you the wrong before, everything's all loosey-goosey, and so we go to the first finger, and you're going to play piano. So wrist and forearm under the finger, and you're just going to roll the whole hand as a unit. Yeah? Use two, three, and four to help. Yes? Now go to two. Wrist in and under. Forearm. Chill. Soften. Oh. No, no, no. Let's see, as soon as I let go, you saw what happened. Yeah. So bring your wrist in and under. And don't work so hard. Roll to knock on my door. more, more, really feel those feet on the floor, and we're going to work one 
I see you for later, we're going to work. But you heard it's easier. Yeah. I don't want us, we work hard enough having to play this piece of wood. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make it easier. That's the goal. Okay? The mirror is going to be your teacher. Okay. Bravo. <laughs>
most of you know, key of E flat for string players is kind of a difficult key, and you did a wonderful job. I thought the intonation was very good. Um, thank you. So I have a question about your head motion and your neck moving while you're playing. Okay, but before we talk about that, and I think all of this kind of plays into one another, um, this opening, you probably worked on it for a good bow stroke, worked on it for intonation, but we gotta keep in mind it's Bach, which is musical phrasing and not, you know, working on an etude for a perfect bow stroke, okay? And I think that's the danger with this because you're thinking about so many good things that it tends to come out very, you know, <laughs> teachers love to exaggerate with Gerald. Uh, Gerald. I, I said that to somebody, I don't know why I'm calling you Gerald. But Gerald, teachers love to exaggerate to prove a point. And it wasn't like that, but I think because you're trying to get the perfect bow stroke, it sounds very even, like it is an exercise, right? So knowing that, and knowing that phrasing is involved, how would you play those first two bars? Show us. Okay. Yeah. No, you don't, yeah, show us. You know that not every note in Bach is created equally, right? We look for chromaticisms, we look for large leaps, because this was based on vocal music, right? So it's not going to be, you're going to take a little time on the pedal like you're doing so beautifully. And I think uh, we have options. We can take space and then an arpeggio. Or we can go through it or we can take time between pedal and top note. But the It 
kind of went a little bit back closer to your equal bow strokes. But let me move on because I think this is all going to make sense by the end. So, you're trying to get comfortable, it looks like. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing with your head as you play. And are you aware of what you're doing with your head? Unnatural. So are you intentionally moving your head though when you go from C to A string? I'm trying not to. Oh, did it look like that, you guys? No. You were there was a lot of adjusting going on. So something you heard me say in our sectional was Karen kind of talked about a neck release before string crossings. Because they're so I guess long story short. You're doing what is natural, but you're making it happen rather than allowing it to happen. So with Jamie, you heard me say that vibrato is a reflex action, okay? Put your fiddle down for me. Bow and fiddle, either on the bench or the piano, whatever. Okay? So, I want you to stand facing. He has no idea what I'm going to do, but again, <laughs> Believe me, I have witnesses. I'm not there, so no. So I want you to be very relaxed, as relaxed as possible. So if I were to slightly take your hands, okay, nice and easy, nice and easy, and I were to just gently yank him forward like I did, what did you feel? It went back. It's whiplash, okay? This whiplash, like getting rear-ended. Kim Koshkashian talks about it, like imagining somebody coming behind you and gently. <laughs> I never know what I'm going to get when these students, you know, some of them might go to yank him forward and they go like this, you know, instead. But yes, we have the perfect uh, demonstrator here, Go Van. But it's this little bit of gentle push, and you see it's a natural reflex. His head goes back, okay? So applying that to a down bow, imagine that if so. I'm going to say this, what Karen Tuttle and Kim Koshkashi and Jeff Horvath, all the Tuttle students that are great teachers out there, they teach this over the tip of the bow or a neck release. And that's why our setup is so important, so that we have freedom. And I'm glad to hear that you're experimenting with your setup. Mm -hmm. But what's getting you in trouble, so I, you're on the right path, but you're held, okay? And you look down when you play. Mm -hmm. So guys, keep in mind, it's what we talked about in Monday's technique class. Your spine, your head sits on top of the spine, right? Kind of rolling around. So it should be free if you're like, you know, looking eye level, nodding yes. That's, that's the most natural. Like we talked about this morning, if you have your chin any higher, remember you said your hands on the back of your spine and you look up, your fingers get constricted, it's tight. So you don't want to look above, okay? So the most free your spine is if you look eye level and slightly drop the chin. So the idea, if you're looking eye level, go ahead and I'm gonna pick somewhere on the, the balcony that's eye level for you, the stained glass or whatever, if you were there and not holding nice and easy, and I were to kind of grab your hand in front and do that first down bow, what happened? The head went back naturally, okay? Michelle, of course, at BU, uses the example of if there's something high on a shelf and you're reaching for it, right? What happens naturally? You reach, your head goes back, right? So, yeah. And so this is a natural extension, but it's only natural when your setup is looking high level. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, grab your fiddle. You've got this opening by memory. So I want to see if we can quiet down all the head motions and rely on the down bow, and it's not down bow, then release the neck. As you play that E flat, you're releasing, softening the neck 
to allow for the ball and socket joint to roll to the second note. So before we do anything, put your fiddle up for me. Excellent. You know, the most important thing is exactly where you are right now. So I want you to find the spot eye level. Okay, cool. Now, all I want is down bow C. So we're going to do an open C. And, but stay at that, I want you to focus on whatever point. Okay, so nice and easy. Good, nice and easy legs. So as you draw that down bow C, the chin releases, which allows the arm to roll to the A string more naturally. Try that. <laughs> he kind of even overshot it because it was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> no, maybe not. I was, I was like, I was really focused on this. Good. Mm -hmm. But again, it wasn't an obnoxious, it was just, oh, right? Mm -hmm. So as you play the C, just a little bit of an O. Like, oh, I got it.
because of the string crossing, there's a lot to worry about. Okay? So now I'm going to add one more thing. So I really don't want to talk so much about arm levels. Kind of like what we talked about this morning in your lesson of armpit space. So as long as we have a little bit of armpit space, that instead of kind of chicken wings we talk about in Texas, elbows down, we tend to bow to the floor. But if we think a little bit of armpit space, that kind of puts us, allowing us to bow out, to help pull the sound and bow out. So that same place that you just started, wherever that was, pick that place again. I forgot. Uh, it can be a different place, I don't care. And looking eye level, you can even make it up on open strings, I don't care. But the idea is looking eye level, so you have this little bit of tightness to kind of constantly grab our head and just kind of either go, uh huh, that, that motion. So that's the motion you should have at all times. Nice and easy. If that's too much, just a little, that's too much. So I don't want you lifting your head up, right? And you've got this great cradle chin rest. Good. And now you're just going to say, uh huh. That's it. That's all the motion you need. So I want you only doing that, mm -hmm. thinking of the chest softening and a little armpit space. Mm -hmm. Remember how we, when we go to the fiddle, mm -hmm. we open this up, right? Mm -hmm. And so then you've got your detache, but mm -hmm. you go to the C string, chill with the head. But it's too many of too many students do the accordion. They they bow with their body to help go to the low string. I want you to think bow arm aerobics. So we keep the fiddle up. You're looking eye level. Uh huh. Nice and head, but not held in the head. Uh huh. And. Physical ease, 
And you're just going to imagine you're walking, and you're going to play it for us now. Eye level, breathing. But that's just it. We all want to play. We want to make it happen. We want to make it happen. And we tend to work too hard rather than to allow it to happen. So again, something we'll work on a little bit more. The ease of looking eye level, dropping the chin, soft chest, and just nice and easy in the back. And that will help with the flow. Thank you.
Well done, Nate. Um, I especially like some of your beautiful piano moves that you achieved. And I think what I, I want to spend the time, our time together, on, you know, Jimmy said, well, you know, when you get up and you play, you get tight, you get nervous. And there's a lot of shifting in this. And I think I, that's what I want to address with you. Okay. Before, before we do that, though, I noticed this very ending, um, you know, it's all very religioso, obviously. Um, very, the mood that you achieve, gorgeous, very flowing, beautiful bow arm. But then you get to this middle section, you know, the timpani, or whatever, for, for brass. Boom, boom, boom. And what I'm seeing is this is then where your shoulder kicked in. So again, we don't want to hold it down, but all of this frog playing, you kind of, and then so that the next section, your shoulder was engaged. And so then you didn't get the sound that you were looking for. So let me work backwards with you. I'm wanting you again. Um, for right now, let's rock. I, 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 don't, I want to address your posture, but I might do it in your lesson rather than a master class. Right. You tend to lock at the waist and lock at the, um, at the knees, okay? So do me a favor, you bring, bring your, yeah, stance in just a little bit. Good. Let's lock more, lock it harder, squeeze. And now, I just want you to soften the back of your legs and your knees. To, yes, right there, to where you disengage, right? So, um, and just rock a little bit side to side for me. There you are, cool, okay? So now, you heard me talk a little bit with um, Gerald to keep on this space, right? So bring your bow around to the heel. Good. So we set, we soften. How's your shoulder? Pretty loose. Good. 
And then it's this weight right here. We've already caught the string. I feel me bending. You pull out and come around. Yes. I'm going to slightly rock you. Don't mind me. Yes. Good. Remember this morning when we talked about the down, down, and the Mozart, the rolling circular? Yes. So beyond the circle, follow through. It's not linear karate chop. But circle, follow through. Yes. Yes. Good. Put my hands on the front. Okay, so soften it in between my hands. Yes. Same. Now play. Don't work so hard. Don't work so hard. Once you have the paw weight, that's all we need, and then the arm just pulls it out. You don't have to work any harder in the chest or the back or the legs. Breathe.
But before we run out of time, let's go to what I really wanted to talk about. Okay. Um, what is that? Forgive the sound, Rob.
we're still figuring out, is it an extension way up high, or am I going to shift? We really need to know, is it an extension or is it a shift? Nico, where are we with time? Four minutes. Four minutes. So I'm debating how much to throw out. Something as we're doing all this, and it's going to affect your tone. You, you know that you want a warm tone. You tend to play on your fingertips. Um, kind of more like violinists. Violists, we can't really get away with that. For something that's slow, remember I started a little bit with Jamie talking about every finger has its own weight and balance. Right. It's for a movement like this. It's so that every finger can be juicy and gutsy. Okay? Okay. If we're on our tippy, tippy toes, it's kind of like bone. It's a very different sound. This versus more on the fat or the pad. Right? There's a very big difference in the sound. Yeah, it's gussy, it's it's tell you so I listen to Aretha Franklin and you know these kind of Billy Holiday jazz singers, and she would try to emulate that in her tone. And that's kind of the fat and pad. So fat. Yeah, bring it back, 
two. Okay, put second finger down, release one. Let three trace two. Yep, and, and relax your back of your hand before you do that and shoot it. So the ring finger is the only finger that doesn't have its own tendon. And that's why you're kind of reaching it, but it's, don't, don't fight it. Only, only lift it as far as it's comfortable, okay. and then doink. Doink. Yep. Yep. Put third finger down, release one and two, and trace the inside of four, two, three. Doink. Yep. Is that a weird feeling? Yes. I, I noticed it. There, yeah, and you want that flexibility for vibrato, okay. but you don't want that for finger action. Okay. And so this is something that we're going to be working on. So again, back of the hand is soft and easy. The tapping that you hear, that's the weight of the finger dropping. Yeah. And something to keep in mind, and I promise we'll end it, um, a lot of us know to get a sound, we fingers fall into the palm of the hand, right? Fingers go down. But what we forget when we're trying to play cleanly, it's also the lift. The lift is just as important. I tell my students, it's a hot stove. Like you've got a flame on the, on the string, heating the string up, and all of a sudden, right? It's, it's that lift that's also important. So the shooting of the fingers and the lift, that's how we play fast and clean as long as the back of the hand and the wrist are easy. And that's why with Jimmy and also with you, I would really want to make sure that we're not like this with the wrist poked out. I'd want to try to bring that in and allow the thumb to move to find a new balance on the pads or the fat of the fingers. Make sense? Yes. All right, gives us all something to think about a little bit. Yeah? Probably. Thank you.